aquí está el Che, Camilo, aquí está el Che. Entendido perfectamente. Esta es Radio Habana, Cuba. Transmitiendo desde Cuba, territorio libre en América. Cuba is itself the victim of a tremendous radio war which the United States started early in 1960, a year before we were even able to be on the air with a little one kilowatt transmitter. As long as there's this tremendous uh, animosity toward Cuba from the United States government, there will be a need for Radio Havana Cuba. I find in Radio Havana Cuba, incredibly, I think we have much more leeway to give our point of view than I've seen, certainly in, in The Voice of America, and certainly in Radio Marti, please. <laughs> of America started regular broadcasts towards Cuba in 1960, March 1960. And also in 1960, the Central Intelligence Agency of the United States started to broadcast special programs, special propaganda programs, uh, what is known uh, by researchers as black propaganda. And that, that operation was part of the Bay of Pigs operation. Almost a year after the U.S. aggression on the radio started, Commander-in-Chief Fidel Castro, for the first time ever, told the world that we were on the air, that we had a radio broadcast station on the shortwave, and he said, now we have a radio station, we are not in the time of the uh, stagecoach anymore. There's no blueprint, in fact, up to now as to how best to do this work. So we have to always be examining to trial and error to find a way how to uh, allow our message reach the hearts and souls of the international community and also on Cuban uh, ground. Uh, led the mafia of Miami wanted to stay with the little boy Elian Gonzalez and take it away from his father and his family in Cuba. We broadcast every day the Cuban media and uh, people wrote to the station saying, we are amazed to see that what you were saying five months ago, today is the day that the U.S. media is bringing that out. There's sometimes really important things that happen in Cuba, and there's absolutely no word of them. A million people go out into the street to protest uh, for the return of Elian, for example. And in Canada, there's absolutely nothing, nothing. A million people in the street. But I counted them one day. Fourteen people on the street of Miami saying that Elian shouldn't go back. And wow, there was tremendous camera. 14 people or 25 people and this was top news but a million Cuban citizens in the street and that wasn't even worth you know two minutes so uh, this so-called freedom of speech and freedom of the press it's you, I think we all have to really look into well, what do you mean about freedom if you have a lot of money if you own a lot of TV channels and radio stations you put your point of view on we don't have censorship as such no one comes to tell us, leave this out or put that in as such. But we do feel that sometimes we do not, we should not play, we should not do the work of our enemies. So if we feel that an issue is going to be used against Cuba, sometimes we might uh, refrain from touching on that issue. You want to call that self-censorship? <laughs> It 
el país ha entrado en Internet y está al mismo tiempo en un proceso de automatización y digitalización. El país está tratando de usar Internet y al mismo tiempo está tratando de upgrade su tecnología en ese field. Por supuesto, automation and technology. Por supuesto que tenemos limitaciones. There are limitations, of course. Los cubanos nos hemos, nos hemos acostumbrado a trabajar con grandes limitaciones. We Cubans have gotten used to working under great constraints. People come here and see a 1956 or 1952 American-made car, a Chevrolet or a Plymouth or a Buick, and they say, it's impossible that this is working. And I say, well, jump inside and go around the city and you will see it's working. This is exactly what we have done with our transmitters. The challenge is to give a third world perspective to issues, as opposed to a mainstream and now more than ever corporate media approach to issues. We'd like to think that we are the voice of the third world, that we speak for them, that we address their problems because we feel their problems, because they are our problems. On our TV screens the other day, we saw the evil one uh, threatening, calling for, for more destruction and death in America. The machinery of America and the way it informs the world is much harder, truly much harder to challenge. But in truth, you can't be truly fair. You've chosen sides. You, you live on one side.